So today is the ribbon, modifying the ribbon. So we've got some stuff to download. So there's a site here. Is there anything to download here? Oh yeah, there is a workbook to download, which we will probably use only briefly towards the end of the class. So here is, uh, I guess I'll go ahead and download that. It's probably already down here somewhere. Yeah, I already got it. Ribbon Wizard 2, so I'll leave that. But let's begin with a blank workbook. Save that one there. New workbook. So here, this is the ribbon. You're familiar with the ribbon. Uh, mine's closed right now because the resolution is not so high on this computer. But you know, here, you drop down. You got all your tools right here. So the goal for today is to learn how we can make a new tab on that ribbon, and we can put our own tools onto that onto that tab, and we can have those tools call VBA code. So here we have you know blank workbook. Alt F11. Let's. Let's get to the right place. It's her new module. So Pardon, is that a new workbook or? It's blank, yes, blank workbook. You're seeing one of my add-ins that I have in here. I'm not sure what add-in this is, but let me get to my Project Explorer so I can get to the workbook I'm on. Close this one. I'm on book one. Insert a new module. And so, you know, let's just, let's have something. We're going to have very simple sub procedure. Sub show time. And there's a message box that will show the current time. So now it shows the date and time. If I run this, it will put in the message box the time that was when we ran that. So pretty simple sub procedure. So we've got this sub procedure that we're going to work on. We want to be able to run this from the ribbon. So we're getting ready to see how to do that. You ready? Let's take a look. Uh, in fact, first of all, before we're going to have to close this, but uh, this will be okay. So we've made a simple little sub procedure. I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'll save it in my documents. New ribbon, enter, policy, XLS. All right, this next part, I just want you to watch. I don't want you to try to do it along with me. I just want you to watch. I'm going, to close, I'm going to close that one. And before we start working on that one, let's just take a look at a, at a workbook that has an existing ribbon built in. <coughs> so if I look at downloads, hopefully I have one here. Got some homework problem here somewhere. You recognize one of those that are homework files? Here's one right here. This is not one that you've done. This is one. Uh, this is this is a homework file that's got a ribbon modification in it. Okay. The first thing to realize that we're doing here is that the Excel the Excel file structure is strange. Most application files kind of have their own structure, kind of proprietary structure. Not Excel. Excel is actually an Excel file is actually a zip archive of a bunch of XML files. Like the workbook itself is a zip archive. Let me just look at, the open, I'm going to open up this one right here. And I'm going to put some text in here. There's probably all kinds of text that we can see. Right here in A1 on a sheet called Cells and Sheets. I'll do this. I'm going to make a new sheet. We call sheet one. I'll put hello. And I will put a number 10. 10 is probably what we're going to be able to see more easily than hello. I'm going to close this and save it. Let me just work that with an, as an Excel file. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to just change the extension of this. What did I say it was? The underlying structure is what? It's a zip archive of a bunch of other files, most of them XML files. I'm going to change the XLSM to ZIP. This is a really weird thing to do. Just change the extension and hope it will behave. That works almost nowhere. 
except for what I'm showing tra- right now. In fact, it's going to complain at you. Wait a minute. <laughs> you know, you're probably going to ruin this file if you do this. Are you sure? Oh, yeah. I know more than you. Yes. <laughs> okay, so now it's a zip file, which will let me extract it. So I should now have extract all up here somewhere. Oh, extract tab, extract all. You're not doing this with me. Just watch it. Uh, I'll put it there. That's fine. Extract. Show the extracted files. So here they are. So here's. This is now a folder. Create a folder. Here it is. It's got all this stuff. This part right here, this folder, custom UI. Let's just take a quick peek here. I'm going to open this folder. And here's custom UI 14.xml. I'm going to open that up. Um, yeah, no, no pad plus plus should be okay. There it is. And so this, this says, I, I don't want to dig through this right now, but this is the definition of a ribbon. It's just an XML. It's kind of like HTML. It's got tags, opening, cl- opening tags, closing tags, tags have properties. It's very much similar to HTML. Um, but here's the definition of it. So we can see there is a new tab labeled Assignment. And in that, there is a group labeled Show Instructions. Do these sound familiar? Yeah, these are the same ribbon that you have on your homework class. Okay. So that's what we've got to build. Uh, If I can't, so I think this has some images built with it. So these images are the images that you're familiar with. Well, some of them are. Like the Submit button you've seen. um, So these are all actually, these images are inside that Excel archive, inside that zip archive. So it's just, we put the images there, we zip up the folder, and, and there they are. If I come into Excel, I should be able to find a set of worksheets. Here's a folder for all the worksheets. Uh-oh. There's name sheet one through five. I guess it's sheet five would be the most recent one I created. I was hoping I'd see the name of it. Worksheet published. I was hoping to see that. I put 10 in there somewhere. Is it sheet 3? That says sheet 3? Four lines down. Uh, four lines from the top there, yeah. Was that the one? Yeah, that's what I was looking at. No, but is that what that sheet I created, what it was called? I don't remember. I think seven or something. Yeah, this got too much data to be the one that I created. Anyway, here's here's data from this sheet. This looks so crazy that this is the way that they have <coughs> our story. But if we look right here, there's a zero on that sheet. There's a bunch of zeros. There's a... There's a bunch of data. It does this. The strings that, in fact, if it has text, instead of actually putting that text onto the worksheet, it has a thing called share strings, that XML. Here's where all the strings across all the workbooks are. It just puts them in here. Uh, here hello, there's the one I added right there. Hello, that's the one that I added while you watched. That's where it ends up in this. We can change this to goodbye. This is a really hard way to edit an Excel file. <laughs> it's goodbye one word or two. Here we go. I'll save that. Um, but but this is you know, this is the file itself. If I now come back here, here's all these files. If I highlight all these and then recompress them, send to the compressed zip folder. And what am I going to call it? Excel.zip. That's fine. But I don't want to call it .zip. What do I want to call it? Excel. So that's it. You sure you want to do that? Yeah. Sure. That should open back up. And it says goodbye there. And I, I edited that file without ever opening Excel. Someday you might be in a situation <laughs> where you don't have Excel on your machine, but you have a file, and you have to just change that one number for the presentation before you send it in. Not right. That's not very compelling to use. <laughs> But, as it turns out, to be able to get to this custom UI, this file right here, yeah, that, in the early days of modifying the ribbon, that's what we did. We literally unzipped the file. We had to create a folder named custom UI, spelled just that way, capital edition everything. We had to make a file called, from scratch, we had to make a file there, and then we had to make it look like this. It's easier now, a little bit. 
Uh, and so the tool that you downloaded essentially does that for you, right? This process that we, that we just went through, extract the file, change it, re-zip it up, that's what that tool I had you download does. If you didn't get it to download, you can still do what we're doing today, it's just more work because you've got to do that process that we just did. Extract, when the folders aren't there, you've got to create those folders and so forth. So, so let's now go ahead and take a look at that file that we created. Uh, what did I call it? New ribbon something. But we're going to open it not using not using Excel. We're going to open that Excel file using the custom UI editor. I didn't check this computer. I assumed it was on this computer. Office custom custom UI address. So here it is. First of all, how many of you successfully got this to install? <coughs> so I'm just going to file file open, and I'm going to go find where I saved that file, which I think was on my desktop. New ribbon. I'm opening that Excel file in this custom ribbon editor. It's not much to look like when it's here, but here it is open. I can see it right over here, new ribbon 17, there it is. If I already had a ribbon in here, that ribbon would show. It's not here. We have to insert it. Now, in, in olden days, we would have to create a folder, custom UI capital, and then in it put custom UI 14.xml and we'd be there. But now there's an insert. We can say insert, and then we can either do, actually we can do both of them if we want to, an Office 2007 custom UI part or an Office 2010. What version of Office do you have? So uh, is that a problem? Do you need 16? No. They made a change between Office 2007 when they first introduced the ribbon and the next generation, they said, you know, we're doing things different. Now that we've got some experience with the ribbon, we can do things differently. And so you can actually have a ribbon show up differently depending on whether it's opened in Office 2007 or a later version. You have two different definitions of the ribbon. Uh, you have more flexibility in the 2010 version. That's the one we're going to use. So we're going to insert an Office 2010 custom UI part. That's like the current, like the current way. It's not much to look at, but here it is. And there's that file, custom UI 14.xml, right? Custom UI 14.xml. So it created that file for us. Now we just got to put in the XML. We can just start typing. What did it look like? It was hideous, wasn't it? Yeah. Open bracket, custom UI. Don't type that. Because there's an insert and there's some samples. And we're going to come here, Excel, a custom. So that's going to get us started with the main things that we need. That must be tiny. I can barely see. So far, so good. All right. So you know this this thing up here is just kind of telling Excel how to interpret this XML that we're going to get here. It starts with custom UI, ends with slash custom UI. Then we've got a ribbon. I don't know of anything that I can change about the user interface besides the ribbon. But they're at least anticipated there might be something else at some day. And so this ribbon ends with slash ribbon. And now here's the set of tabs. Slash tabs. I'm working inside the tabs. And now here I've got a tab ID custom tab. So this is where we're now actually creating. So far we've just been said where we're going to be doing the changes. Now here, this line right here says we're going to make a new tab. It's a tab. It's got a custom ID and, and some, other, some other parameters. So every ID that I create has to be unique compared to all the other IDs that are in this file. So there's an ID down here, custom button one. I can't have the tab named custom button one. They have to be different. Is that how you add something? In, I mean, in BBA, we'd say add sheet. This is just it's stating that there's a new ID that's unique. That's correct. We just, we just, this is different. This is not a programming language. This is a markup language. 
And so this just, I, I, I'm not giving it an instruction to do something, I'm saying I'm giving it the definition of this ribbon. This doesn't execute. This just says this is how this thing is defined. So, I'm saying if we a new tab, I'm giving it a custom tab. I think that's a great idea. Custom tab's a great idea for this. Now the label is what we want to show on the tab. So I'm going to put for this tools. Now this one's interesting. There's a parameter here called insert after. I can insert this like after one of the existing tabs. If I don't specify which tab to insert it after, where's it going to go? Yeah, all the way to the right. This is where I prefer to put it. So I'm going to get rid of this argument altogether. This just says I'm making a new tab. It has this ID and it's going to have a label of tools. So it'll show up here in the ribbon. Way over here at the right, it's going to say tools. If I click on that tab then, we're going to see that we've got several groups. Now, first thing to realize here is that I can bring in an existing group. So there's a group called clipboard. It's already part of the ribbon somewhere. And I can just say, you know what? I want the clipboard group in this tab. Question? Can we comment out in this? Oh, can you comment in this? Good question. If you can, here's an HTML comment. I'm not sure if it works in XML. Uh, looks like it might. It looks like it's, it's editing. It's accepting it. Let me just check. There's a there's a parser here that can check to validate this. It says it's well formed. Pause for a second. Let me just verify that that's right. Google says it's valid. Well, then it must be true. <laughs> yeah, that comment seems to have seems to have been just fine. Okay, yeah, so it's open bracket, close bracket, and then inside, exclamation point, dash, dash, your comment, and then dash, dash. All right, so I'm, I'm not going to bring in any existing groups, right? You've got this example. If you really want to bring an existing group in, you can. So this group, oh, and by the way, here's, the, here's how you can tell the difference. If it's, I, if it's just ID, it's something I'm creating. If it's ID MSO, that's Microsoft Office. That is a, that's an identifier from Microsoft Office. I'm doing something with an existing object of some kind. So these two group definitions here, I'm going to get rid of. And there's group definitions here at the end. I'm going to get rid of all those. So I've just got, made my tab, and then I've got a group with all the way to the slash group here, which is the tab that I'm defining. It's the group. I've got the tab, now I've got the group in here. Custom group, again, is, I think, a nice thing. So the label for this one, I'm just going to call this time tools. I only have one time tool so far. It's a great tool. It shows the current time. So I've got a button here. So I'm making a new button. Button ID is called custom button one. That's great. The label. I'll make that say showtime. It's showtime. Now, the size is going to be the size of the image that goes with this button. <laughs> there are two sizes, large and normal. <laughs> it's large and normal. So, I think it's normal. Large and normal. Anyway, large is almost always what we want. You don't need normal until you're getting. Lots and lots and lots of tools built in here, and we're not going to get there today. So we'll set size equal to large. The action now is the name of a VBA sub-procedure that we want to execute. I forgot what I called it. Did I call it showtime? Yes. Uh, it yeah. seems like what I should have called it. So I'm going to change the action on action to showtime. That now is the name of the sub-procedure that I want to call. Great. And now... We've got an image. We're going to put an image on this. And I'm going to get rid of my other two buttons. We're going to simplify this down to a single button. <coughs> and it doesn't have to go on one line. We can actually break this down into multiple, multiple lines. Might make it a little bit easier to see.
Now, this is image MSO. What can you guess about, what can you tell me? Make, make some guess, based on what I've already said, make some guess about this particular property. It's already existing at the top. Yeah, somehow, this MSO here tells me this already exists. This is a Microsoft object. Oh, maybe MSO says for Microsoft objects. They say Microsoft objects. I don't know. One of those two. And so this is the identifier of an existing image that's built into Office. There are 1,500 such images for you to choose from. Not all of them are big. And so when you make them big, it's a large size, they don't look so big. So how would you, how would you possibly know this one was called bold? That's a hard part. Yeah, you can Google it. Let's see, that's not especially easy to either. Um, I did find, for the first year, um, this, this semester for the first year, I found a pretty good site out there for it. Um, and you can Google it and find it. But I have given you a link right here, image names, Microsoft Office image names. And that is just a link to a Google photo album that I built this very day. Hey, there's me. Unfortunately, there's no way to control how big the images preview at in a Google Photo Album. So even though these are tiny, they show kind of big. But here they are. This is all the images you have to choose from. So this is showing the time. Hmm. I wonder if there's anything that looks like a time. You would think with 1,500, everything you could possibly want is here. That's not true. Maybe there is an hourglass. Hey, look, a CD, that looks kind of like a clock. I'll use no, that one. Oh, there's a stopwatch. Wonderful, I'll use this one. Okay, so I'm just going to select this. Remember, this is just a Google photo album. So when I select it, it's just going to show. I need to come and say, show the information. But then here's the name of the file. And these files are named with the identifier, the Microsoft Office identifier. So this is CD Audio Start Time. The .png I don't need for the identifier. I just need the part up to the .png. So I'll copy that, and I'll put that in CD audio start time. Case matters. Here. you got to get the case exactly. Sure, that's a high resolution image or a low one. Question? No? Okay, so now I think I'm in pretty good shape. I've got a new tab, I've got a new group, I've got a button in that tab. And now I'm, I've got it all configured here nicely. The good thing to do is to come here and say, I want to validate this XML. This little button right here will check over and make sure you've done the XML right. Your custom XML is well formed. If you got an error message there, it means you've done something wrong. You're missing a closing bracket or closing tag or something. It would be a good time for us to pause, and if you've got an error message when you click on this, let's help you get it corrected. Also, good question. In VBA, if we had, if we wanted to break this line up to multiple lines, we had to put some kind of special character. Uh, and the answer is no, you don't have to put any kind of indication what where a line starts and ends because we have a symbol that marks the end of this structure. So, right, we start with an opening tag and the closing tag. So that's how it knows when we're done. And white space kind of in the middle of this is ignored. That's in the definition of XML, that white space is ignored. All right, so I've checked, I've checked, and my... XML will form. I'm going to save this, and now I'm going to close. File, close. One of the really frustrating things that will probably happen to you at one point in your career of working with the ribbon is Excel will actually allow you to have this workbook open in both places. You can have it open in the custom editor, and you can have it open in Excel. Excel's okay with that. Don't do that. If you do that and you make a change in Excel, you know, you go write some code and go, great, I want to put another ribbon on, you come back over here, you change the ribbon, you hit save on this, what's going to happen? 
Yeah, you're going to overwrite the changes that you made in one with the other. So even though they are both open at the same time, whichever one you save is going to be the one that gets written over. So even though there's some times when you probably could meaningfully have them both open, don't do that. Just have it open in one place at a time. So now I'll open this back up in Excel. And there's my Tools tab. If I open it up, it's got a Time Tools group. And it's got a show time button. Now, the button's not quite going to work yet. Because it says wrong number of arguments or invalid property assignment. Hmm. I'll, we'll narrow it down. I will tell you it's the first part of this error that's the problem. Wrong number of, of arguments. So what does that mean? Wrong number of arguments. What's an argument in the, in the lingo of VBA? Okay, so now is an argument to what? It's an argument to the message box. But we know that this is the, we know that's not the problem because this works, so we just run it. So it's not a problem with the code. The code still runs. <coughs> Any other thoughts? Wrong number of arguments. <laughs> ah, very good. So you actually realize what this thing is. Here's what happens. Whenever I click on something in the ribbon, whether it's a button or a combo box or a checkbox, lots of things we can put in the ribbon, it's going to call whatever procedure I have in the on action of the definition of that control, but it's also going to send a reference to itself. And so I have to think, it's going to, it's going to send that. It's expecting me to be ready to receive an argument. And so I have to define it here to receive that argument. Uh, so I'll call it hmm, control or CTL as an I ribbon control. It's just an object variable. It's just going to give me a location in memory, but it is an I ribbon control. So now my message box, I'll put now, and then it wants to know, you know what kind of image do I want. I'll just do VB information. And for kicks, I'm going to put on the title ctl.id. So ctl is a reference to the control the user clicked on in the ribbon to invoke this sub-procedure. And so in the title bar of this message box, I'm going to show the ID of that control. What did we call it? We left it what it was, which was, remember the ID? I think it was custom button 1. And so the title of this message box should say custom button one. I come over here to my tools, click on show time. Now it's calling that, and it has put the ID of the button that I clicked on here to be able to call. That, that's our first successful, our first successful trip through the ribbon. Questions? Did that work? Did that work for you? Are you checking your email? Working on the next project? Right, if it's not working, now's a good time for us to kind of help. Let's go ahead and add another tool. But this one, we're going to bring our own image into. So how do you bring, how do you create your own image or put your own image in? <laughs> Rather than create our own image, we're just going to go look for one. Uh, let's see. Icon finder, is that close? We've got an icon finder. And I'll look for something. Why don't we look for database? These are through 2 million icons. Maybe I have to pay for something. There we go. There's a bunch of them. I don't want to buy these. Never mind. Let's look at Google. Database icon. All right. So here are plenty of database icons for me to choose from. I'm going to come straight to the images. So I'm only looking at the images. Hmm. Still too many for me to have to deal with. 
Now, I know that the, the default size, like the image that fits perfectly on the ribbon, is 48 pixels square. So I'm going to come over here to Tools, and I'm going to specify the size to be exactly 48 by 48. Why is it all data? Is that Benjamin Franklin? I can't resist. It's Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> so I'm going to take Benjamin Franklin here, view image, and then I'm going to save this image. Right click this, save image as, and downloads is fine. Now, the name that I have here for it, whatever it name is for the .png, that's what I'm going to refer to this icon by. So I'll call it Franklin. Case is going to matter, so I'll put all the work case, just so I remember how I did it. Franklin.png. <laughs> so now we save that. I'm going to see I close that. I'm going to reopen in my office editor that same file. And in the same, hmm, let's make a new group. So I'm in the same tab. I'm just going to copy this group and make a new group. Now, immediately, this has made my XML no longer valid. Why is my XML no longer valid? I, mean, I copied it right, I pasted it right, I've got tab slash tab, I've got a group in here, that one ends, my next one starts, this one ends, I don't have it you know, kind of part way inside of another one. But there's a problem, what's the problem? Duplicate what? Well, you, ID. Mean, you mean ID, right. I've got two IDs and they're now duplicated. So instead of custom group, I'm going to call this the quote group. And on my custom button, instead of custom button one, I'm going to call it Franklin. Let me go back and find out where that image came from. There may be other founding fathers on icons that can be either the rest of the day. Question here? Um, looking at your code right now, you open a group, you put in a group, you close the group, you open another group, you put in a group, you close the group. Looking at the original, how it was, they had three groups, but there, were, there was only one to close. Ah. Is that because they were bringing in Microsoft? Yeah, let me, here's the question. Let me talk the question through. I'm going to cut this out. Um, I can go put it in Notepad to be able to bring it back, but I need to bring something back in to be able to answer this question. So I'm going to insert the standard one again, the sample custom tab. So if we look here, this is the one that we've worked with. So group slash, uh, starts with group tag, ends with a slash group tag. But if we look at these other ones, it starts here group, it tells it, hey, we're using an existing group, group clipboard, that's an existing you know, the clipboard group from a different ribbon. But you'll notice that my group tag, here when I'm making my new group, the group tag starts here with an open angle bracket, it's really a less than sign, but open angle bracket, and it ends with a closing angle bracket. That means, if I've got my opening tag that goes like that, that means it's expecting a closing tag. So down here it's got slash group. But if it's not expecting a closing tag, then the opening tag begin, ends with the slash, it includes the, the slash as well. So when I look at this one right here, this says uh, group, I've given it a property, and that's all it needs. It doesn't need to know what's inside the group, because that property does everything I need it to do. And so the slash closing tag says that that group's done. This group, that starts the same, open tag group, it ends with just a tag. That means, aha, we should be expecting a slash group because we've got to define what's inside this we don't have to define what's inside these groups, are already defined. And so that's the difference. Does that, that answer your question? Yes. Back to where, back to where we were. Okay, so instead of time tools, this group will be Wisdom from the Founding Father. It's kind of a long group name, it's called Quotes. And instead of show time, we'll put Franklin here. 
So for my ID, I put a capital F on there. So my ID, I'd better have it in lowercase, or maybe camel case, but lowercase to start. It'll be large. Action will be, hmm. We're going to have to give it another name. We can't call this a meme. We could. This isn't a problem. It would just do exactly the same thing, which is kind of boring. So we'll make another one here called, quote, Franklin. We'll have to build that procedure. And now the image. If we were going to use an existing image, we would say image MSO, but we're not. We're not using an existing Microsoft object. And so instead of image MSO, it's just going to be image. And now we have to bring that image in. That's an insert process. So I'll come to my insert tab, my insert menu, and I'll insert icons. Here it is. Where's that icon? It's in the downloads. Franklin PNG. Apparently, last time I did this, I did I put Buddha in there. <laughs> Maybe we'll do Buddha next. And that has now, you don't see it, but I can now expand open this custom UI 14, and here's Franklin, right there. By default, it gets the name of the file showing up here. I can change this if I want to at this point. But I find you just to name the file the way I want it, import it, and then I'm ready to go. That is the image, Franklin. It's whatever shows right here. And again, you can edit this to be something different, but whatever's there is what needs to show. So I'm going to check my XML. Looks great. I'm going to save this and close it. The process cannot access the file. It's being used. Did I leave it open? I did. She wanted to close this. I want to save it? I better save it. Oh, shoot. See, this is the problem I was talking about. Did I make changes here? I made all kinds of changes here. I'm going to save this. Now, if I just come save this, what will it do? Right, right over the changes I just made. So I'm going to copy this one I have here, and I'm going to close without saving. Close. Do I want to save the changes? No. Open. That same one. That's not it. Desktop. And paste that in. I've got to reinsert the icon. <coughs> So I broke my rule. I let them both open at the same time. It's no good. Okay, I should not be able to save this and be okay. But while we're here, let me show you one other thing. That seemed like a strange thing to have to remember that you've got to add a parameter that's a custom UI or UI control, whatever it is. This button right here will, will actually build the callbacks that you need. It'll, it'll, it'll give you the beginnings of the VBA you need. We're calling two things, one called Showtime, one called, quote, Franklin. If I click on this, it will build that VBA for me. So here it is. Here's sub, quote, Franklin. This is, you know, it's here just with the idea you might want to copy this. I'll go ahead and copy the quote, Franklin one. And I'll come back to my custom UI and save. I don't think I can save it while, yeah, I can't save it while I'm looking here. I've got to come back to custom UI to fix it. I'll save and close. I'll open again. Go back to my code and I'll paste in that stub. So it, it has the I ribbon control put in for me. Put a message box. Penny saved. There's a penny. So now if I come to Tools, I've got Franklin there, my Showtime, and it executes that. We've got 28 quotes from the Founding Fathers. We could fill up this whole ribbon. We can only find pictures for them. Can you go back to the VBA code first? Here's the VBA code. As it turns out, we can put in text boxes. 
check boxes, drop down lists. We can do all kinds of crazy things up here in the ribbon. That's beyond what we're going to do here in class. This is a kind of a lot to bite off today. So I'm just letting you know those things, anything you can see over here in one of these existing ribbons, you can do. All this stuff, these drop downs, check boxes, you can do all this. Um, so, you know, that's there. Where would you go to learn about this? I gave you a link in Learning Suite for that. The best place that I know of is a guy named Ron De Bruin. Ron De Bruin. In the early days of this, I mean, like in 2007, when Excel 2007 came out and we had the ribbon. Those of us who were developers were going, oh, we got to figure out how to do this ribbon. And it was a nightmare. Microsoft gave almost no documentation. And, and once you did figure it out, it was really hard, right? Extract the file, create the structure, zip it back up. Um, and this guy, Ron, who's from the Netherlands, you know, like put up one of the very first pages. He said, I figured it out. Well, lots of coffee later, I figured it out. And you know, here's how you do it. And he is, he's like kept this up to date. So that's great. What was the link that I put this into right now? We'll go check that one. The Ron Bruin site, the modification. So he takes you through lots of different examples. He gives you step-by-step um, you know, -step how to do this, lots of files to download that have ribbons built into them that you can take a look and play with them. Oh, by the way, if you ever open a workbook and it has a smiley face that says, click me, and you click on it, you deserve whatever happens to it. <laughs> 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 but, <laughs> yeah, that, you know, that's a learning experience. So there should be a bunch of... Yeah, so, so it turns out, not until 2016 could you change the ribbon in uh, the Mac version, but that's available now too, and so he's got instructions on different things. Here he's pointing you to that same file I had you download for class today. That's where I learned it. Uh, oh, visit the examples page. Here's the example. He's got lots of examples uh, in here for you to use. Okay, that's what we're going to cover in terms of that approach to modifying the ribbon. Any questions before we move on? Yes. So, using this method as opposed to like going to file. There's an option. That, oh, yeah, let me let me cover that. That's a good question. So the question is, hey, wait a minute. I saw a way to modify the ribbon somewhere else. File, options, mm, customize ribbon. I can do all kinds of stuff here. I can make a new tab. I can group. I've never done. Actually, I've never done this. But I can do this here. Why don't I do it this way? So when you modify the ribbon this way, what ribbon are you modifying? Yeah, you are modifying the Excel ribbon on this instance. You make a change here, it doesn't matter which workbook you have open, that change sticks around. So if you want to make you know, a change that's, that's always on your computer, this is where you come to modify that ribbon. If instead you want that ribbon to follow the workbook, so when the user opens the workbook, that ribbon comes with it. These are tools that invoke the code in this workbook, then you do it the way that we do it, that we just did. That's the difference here. Was that your question? Uh, yeah. So, yeah, you can do, you know, come do great things here, but it's only for this particular machine. In fact, let's just, let me just try it. Let me try it. New tab. There's a new custom tab. New group. Uh, I guess one's enough. Now, the question is, there must be a way for me to be able to put a command to VBA in here. Yeah, macros. Macros. I can just put in, did I put the right thing? Because these aren't my macros. Number one. These must all be macros off of this other um, data analysis toolkit thing that keeps showing up. That must be what those are. It's my other one. What did I call it? Show time. Mine showed up the show time. I'm not quite sure why aren't showing it. But anyway, so yeah, we could do that. And that then is, you know, again, those would stick to this particular one. Customization for yourself. Are these are all customizations. Delete. Seems like I really wanted to be sure. I'll find it all the time. 
Okay, there's another tool that I've given you to download. So one day, like in 2012, I was sitting at home wondering what to do with my life. I just learned a little bit about the ribbon, and I thought, oh, you know what? I really understand how the ribbon gets modified now. What happens? You've got you got to extract the workbook and do all that stuff. I thought, I can probably do all of that with VBA. Uh, and so I wrote a tool that lets you do this a little more, a little more graphic way. It's not, it lets you do everything, but it lets you do some stuff. And that's what the Ribbon Foundry workbook is on Learning Suite. So come back to Learning Suite. Oh, Ribbon Wizard 2 is what it's called. Ribbon Wizard 2. I downloaded that already somewhere. I'm just going to find it. So let me just take you through basically how that works. Now it turns out this isn't going to work for all of you. It like, doesn't work for some people. I don't know why it doesn't work. And I, you know, I haven't ever really tried to make it work for everybody. But if it does work for you, this might be handy. What's that called? Ribbon Wizard 2. Oh, that's that. Wizard 2. So let me just take you through this tool. Hmm. I mean, there is a wizard out here, but I mean, the ribbon foundry in here. What is it? There it is. I think I even tell you the day I made this. I think it was Martin Luther King Jr. Day. It has a remarkable number of comments about this. Will it work in the Mac version? No. Uh, actually, it probably still won't work, but um, at least you can do it. Can I get an update? If I ever release it, it will be here. I've never made an update. What does it cost? No, it's free. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay, here's how it works. So you've got a Ribbon Foundry tab up here. Uh, instructions just shows this page. Samples, value identifiers. The idea here, then, is that you make a worksheet, you make a tab, for every tab that you want to make in your ribbon. So here's an information tab. There's going to, this is going to now generate a tab in the ribbon called information. It's also going to create a tab, a tab called data. Then each row you put here is just going to have the information. So time, so this is a group called time services. There are going to be three tools in the time services group. So the group name's all the same. You, you literally just put the image here. You put the image on the worksheet here that you want to go with. So find an image somewhere, put it in here. Text, size, identifier, all this should sound familiar from the, the thing that we just did. Uh, you can even put the procedure here, which seems weird, but it's just so that when I generate this, it's the code ready to go. So, um, how does this work? <coughs> I think we just say create ribbon. And it will look to other workbooks that are currently open. I think I'm about to add two new tabs to the workbook that I have open here. I'm not sure if it's going to obliterate the one that's there already. So rather than do that, I'm going to close that one and open a new one. Close. New. Probably has to be saved somewhere before you do this. So. I'm going to save this as, put it in downloads, or one, XLSM. Let's go try that again. Go over here in the ribbon foundry, or whatever it's called. Create ribbon. That's the workbook I'm going to put it on. I'll insert the ribbon. It should now try to go through and do all of that. Save a copy of that. Probably even closes the workbook. It extracts it. So all that modification, puts the files, everything you can put there. And then it opens up again, and here it is. So here's information. And here's now, here I am on my R1, brand new worksheet. Uh, and this ribbon then is built with all the identifiers and things that were here. Now, I had two I had two ribbon modifications. Where's the other one? What was the other one called? Information and data. So is there a data? Why didn't it create a data tab? There's already a data tab. And so it's added this row highlighting group to the data tab. So if you use the name of an existing ribbon, it will put it onto that ribbon. Now, of course, there's no VBA here yet, but it's just right here. Right? So I can copy this, 
And this is really only here so that we can make this example happen a little bit faster. But if I come to R1, insert a module, I'll paste the code in here. Maybe I should do it through the interface. There's a tool here that said copy code stubs. <laughs> trouble is when I do that, if you have multiple lines inside of a cell, it, co it copies them out with quotes. So I'll have to get rid of the quotes here. So now, at least that group should work in my R1. It's pretty boring. You may, you may, you may feel um, some affinity for this because it's a, it's a homework problem that you did earlier in this week. <clears throat> and the point was not to be you know, dazzling with my code, it's just to go through it. So you can, you know, if we want to change this, we can come in here and change what's on these, you know, change the texture or whatever, and we generate the variable with that. How many of you tried to do this and it failed on your machine? Okay, a few. How many of you tried it and it worked on your machine? Okay, so it seems like, uh, literally, I don't know why you really wanted to make it work and it's failing for you, bring it over, maybe we can track down here. This then is another way that you could modify the ribbon if it happens to work for you. Questions on this? <laughs> okay. Oh, yes. So you're adding to the data tab, but how does that rearrange everything? How does it rearrange? So, like when I look at my data tab, my data tab goes all the way across the screen. But you've added something to it. So, does it. Oh, good question. Does it shrink everything so down? So, the question is hey, we've got. We've I gotta get to the right one. We've got all these tools and it, it it fills in. I mean, my tools already take up the whole screen. How did you get those on there? And the answer is that's just part of the way the ribbon works. The ribbon automatically knows how to say, you, we've got too much to show on how wide the screen is, and so it will collapse some of these groups. It'll do it even more if I make my resolution smaller. So see, it's 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 collapsed this thing down as far as it can go, and now it's giving me a scroll bar to be able to scroll over. Even the one that I created gets collapsed down here, so it just shows the group name, and I can expand it down to get to the tool. That's just one of the neat things that's kind of functionality that's built into the ribbon for you. You don't have to worry about that. It does its best to get the stuff to fit. Good question. Other questions? Okay. So the last thing that we're going to cover today is Building an add-in. What's an, what's an Excel add-in? How many of you have used an add-in for something? Yeah, you know, somewhere you got uh, some of the main add-ins. The solver is an add-in. The data analysis toolkit is an add-in. Uh, how many of you are using the risk, the at-risk add-in for your class or something? So you're using that. So it's basically where someone has said, I'm going to develop some extension. I'm going to extend the functionality of Excel. You're going to buy my add-in or... Maybe I'll give it to you, depending on, somehow you're going to acquire the code that I've written, uh, and then you're going to install that into Excel. So that, you know, to this instance of Excel, so whatever you do, you've got that new functionality built in. It turns out you can build add-ins with VBA. Not all add-ins are built with VBA. There's other environments to build them in, but you can build add-ins with VBA. Uh, and and in, the, in the 12 minutes that we have remaining, we're going to build an add-in and install it. Are you ready? we go. I'm going to close this R1. You want to save this? Sure. Uh, I'll close the Ribbon Wizard as well. Save it. Don't save it. And I'm going to reopen New Ribbon F17. I, I will grant you that this is not a very compelling add-in. We can show the time and we can tell you a penny saved and a penny earned. If you, if you want that functionality, Always around with you, 
You can install this edit I'm about to build. <coughs> there it is. So the point is, I've got VBA code written in here. I've got a ribbon modification. Now I just have to make that into an edit. Here's how we do it. File, save as, and then instead of a macro-enabled workbook, I'm going to come down here and find something that says add-in. It should be XLAM. There's a 2003 add-in. I don't like that. that one? Oh, here it is, right before it. An XL add-in, XLAM. Now, <clears throat> the first time that we... The first time that we save a workbook that we have to save our code in, we had to change it from an XLSX to an XLSM. What happened if we saved it as an XLSX? The code's gone. Let's start again. Save it as an XLSM. But the point is, XLSM or XLSX, those are both editable formats. I can save it, I can reopen it, and work on it. XLAM is not editable. And so I'm going to make sure first that I save this, and I've made the changes, I save the changes. Save. Because this is now the source for my add-in. I then am going to publish the add-in by doing a save as and add it. So file, save as. I'm going to find that XLAM. And it's, it's putting it, well, look where it's putting it. It's putting it right here in app data roaming Microsoft add-ins. Don't put it there. I'm going to put it on my desktop. It'd be, it'd, okay to be, it'd be okay to put it there, but I'm going to put it somewhere I can find it. Uh, and here it is, New Ribbon F17 XLAM. I don't like that name. I'm going to call it Quotes. Quotes XLAM. Okay, so it is saved that, but it, it can't open it because why? It's not editable. So I'm still looking at my XLSM file here. So it's saved, it's saved that add-in off. I'm going to go ahead and close this workbook now. I'm not quite sure what it'll do if I have two ribbons or two files open with the same ribbon modification. So I'm going to go ahead and install. File. Options. Add-ins. Manage Excel add-ins. Go. Here's my list of add-ins. It's not showing up. What do I do? Browse. I'm going to go find it. Um, did I actually hit save on that? Well, that's winter. That's from last winter. I saved it in that place. That's the default place. I'm going to go find it in, where did I put it? No, I was talking. There it is. Quotes XLAM. You say OK. Uh, there it is. Quotes. Say OK again, and open a new workbook, file, new workbook, and was it there before? Maybe it was there before. Tools, there they are. So the only workbook I have up right now is brand new blank workbook, but these tools are here, and they're functional. They do exactly what they used to do. Oh, we allocated 12 minutes for that, it took us four, that's pretty good. You don't have to open a workbook. Yeah, you know what, that's funny because I looked and I didn't see it, and so I thought maybe I have to have a workbook open, but you're right. File close. Yeah, it's still the tools. I think I was looking for quotes in my mind. Yeah, so it just it pops up now. Uh, so it's a question. So when you have an add-in, um, if anyone installs the add-in on their uh, version of Excel, are they able to see the source code? Good question. Let's take a look. So right now, I'm going to come to my Visual Basic Editor, Alt F11. And here is quotes.xlam. Here's module one. There it is, the code right there. And so we can put password protection on it. Uh, and if we protect it before we make the add in to it, it'll be protected. So let me go ahead and take this off. File options. Actually, I'm going to open up the source for it and just see what happens. It'll probably just give me two tabs called tools. But the fact that, it, that they both have the same identifiers in it might cause all, all kinds of heck to happen. So, this one. Oh, so far so good. Tools, tools. So, I don't know which is which. 
but I come here and look at new ribbon, I can choose uh, tools, VBA project properties, and then on protection, I can say lock project for viewing, and then put a password here, and then if they don't have the password, they can't get to it. Caution! The password here is eminently crackable. So if somebody really wants to get at, at it, they'll be able to get at it. It's, in fact, you can probably figure it out in less than five minutes with a Google Earth. The good news is, it's not as easy as it used to be. It used to be painfully easy. Painfully easy. Painfully easy. It was so easy that when you read about it, if you were a developer trying to protect your code, it caused you pain. To find out just how easy it was. So it was painful for those cracking the code. Oh, no. It was painful for those protecting the code. I tier the security class in the Emirat on all the Excel and uh, Office documents. Thank you for the millions of pounds for the site. That's the. Yeah, so. But, but if you. Um, yeah, but the old one, like before 2007. That is the old one. That's, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you know a little bit more about how to actually to do that, the way it actually encoded the passwords was was childishly simple. So you could actually just make all combinations of A and B uh, for a password. That would, you know, so it's a one character password, it's either A or B would, would get you in. If it's two characters, it would be A, 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 B, 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 or B, A. One of those four, it doesn't matter what they really were, one of those four would do it. So. Okay. Um, uncharacteristically, we're done. Um, I'm done saying everything I wanted to say with five minutes to spare. Other questions? Yes. So, just to get this clear in my head, if you wanted to create a ribbon and then give it to all your coworkers, you would give it to them as an add-in. Is that correct? Okay. So here's the thing: if you wanted to create functionality that they could install onto their version of Excel that would be available no matter which workbook was open, that's how you would do it. You would create your workbook, your ribbon, all the code in there, you would save it as an add-in, give them the add-in file, and they're good to go. If you want to create functionality that, that pertains to just a workbook and follows the workbook, then you put a ribbon customization on the workbook. That doesn't matter who opened that workbook. Whoever opens that workbook, the ribbon shows up. You close that workbook right away, the ribbon tools go away. So yeah, kind of having those two modes to do it is really pretty nice. Other questions? We have two days of class left. That means we got to get the test and go to the testing center. Oh, oh, we're not worried. Oh, we're not worried. We're not worried. We're not worried.